Nebraska corn for miles and miles and miles. Golden Spike Tower, home to the largest railroad yard in the world. Hey everybody, it's Mark the Lost Traveler, and we're ready to travel. Union Pacific, Golden Spike, Pullman Car, North Platte, Golden Spike Tower. This should be exciting. Welcome, welcome. This is the Union Pacific Railroad draft map that was made back up in 1976 of the Bailey Yard. the Golden Spike Tower and Visitor Center, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to take in the panoramic view of Union Pacific's Bailey Yard, the world's largest rail yard from our eight-story tower. The Golden Spike Tower and Visitor Center, more trains than you can keep track of. Uh, the interesting thing about North Platte, uh, especially for the railroad, is historically uh, here in North Platte, it was a natural fit for a stop-off place, and that was way even before the railroad. Uh, settlers going east coast, west coast, using the various trails, would use North Platte as a stopover. So when Grenville Dodge was surveying the railroad for Union Pacific, he could foresee uh, the future of a rail yard being here because it was a midpoint for Union Pacific. In other words, trains going from Chicago to Salt Lake City, North Platte was in the middle. For trains going from Denver to Omaha, North Platte was in the middle, so it made perfect sense that he could eventually see a rail yard here that would serve the entire railroad. North Platte was a railroad town before it was North Platte. It was known as Hell on Wheels Town in 1866, and by 1867, mainline operations began complete with a major shop facility for the repair of Union Pacific trains. It remains a major repair facility today. The Bailey Yard was named after Ed Bailey. Well, Ed Bailey was the president of the Union Pacific from 1965 to 1971. And a lot of people wonder why and why it was named after Bailey, because Mr. Bailey had a lot of vision in mind. He wanted to make sure the railroad functioned and made sure it was going to go. This is the world's largest classification yard. It's eight miles long, approximately a mile and a half to two miles wide, and it goes 24-7. Uh, Bailey Yard is, is made up of about 2,500 employees. We run approximately 150 trains a day through here. That's broken down by uh, 60 manifests, 70 coal, and then you have your auto, intermodal, grain, and ore. We process about 10,000 cars a day through the yard. Uh, we service about 300 locomotives a day. The two hump yards hump about 1,500 cars each a day. The two hump yards is a, is a key component. Uh, the other is the run-through operation, you know, how we process these trains through here quickly. Some of our trainings actually came from NASCAR pit crews of how well we can process these things through here as quick as we can and how we work together as a team with different departments on trains. You have 36 loaded coal trains going east every day and 36 empties going west. You average about it, uh, and a regular freight train will have 138 cars on it. Through the widest part of the yard, there's 301 sets of rails out there. That's enough track to make another main line from here to Omaha or to Cheyenne. Union Pacific has been the lifeblood of North Platte since it was organized as a city in 1874, eight years after General Dodge planted Union Pacific's rail yard on this very site. It's also been the lifeblood of thousands of employees. First, second, and third generations have relied on the railroad to support their families. Dale Jurgensen was just one. He began with Union Pacific in 1940. He was a conductor. Well, it wasn't anything like the conductors that were here when I first come out. Uh, deep conductors, when you first had that, they really grouchy, crabby old men. But when, by the time I got there, that's all very well changed. It was a little bit more like riding down the highway in your auto. We had the fireman, the engineer, and the brakeman. We all had to check our orders to see if they were right. It was a fun job when we were there. 
We had a good time. I enjoyed it. We had to retire at age 70. And there were a lot of them that didn't want to have to retire at age 70. They preferred to keep working. It was their, it not only was their job, it was their life. Many people's only exposure to trains is waiting for them at a railroad crossing. We see the train engine or locomotive, and oftentimes we count the cars to pass the time. But that big locomotive, now that's something special. Locomotives in our industry, they're, uh, they're kind of interesting because everyone thinks that it's the diesel engine that's actually powering the locomotive. The best way to describe how a locomotive works is it's much like a model train set. A uh, locomotive actually runs on electricity. The diesel engine turns a huge electric generator, creates electricity, and the uh, engineer, he adjusts the amount of voltage going to the electric motors that are connected to the wheel. In different areas across our railroad, we have diesel repair facilities. Now here at Bailey Yard, is one of our largest. We have electricians, we have mechanics that work on the various parts that make up these locomotives. So uh, here they will take a diesel engine apart when it's time for a, a overhaul. Uh, you have electricians that work on the electrical generators. Uh, the mechanics here are able to change the very heavy components uh, of a diesel electric engine that we use in the railroad today. At Bailey Yard, they have two hump yards, or elevated mounds, that they utilize to sort rail cars. Each car is released from the train down the hump. As the car proceeds downward, retarders slow the car to the perfect speed to couple with the train taking it to its final destination. Well, we have two different hump yards in, inside the yard, um, two different types. One we refer to as an inline yard and one that's more of a side-by-side. -side. The humps themselves are made up of a receiving yard and a departure yard. The, the bowl tracks is really the tracks where the cars are actually classified. Each bowl track has a specific uh, destination. So one track may be for Little Rock, one may be for Parsons, uh, one may be for Kansas City. And so as those cars are humped into the bowl tracks, that's kind of the term classification. We kind of get them all in the tracks that they go in so that they can meet their outbound uh, schedules to make destination. And there you have it, a brief glimpse of what you'll see from atop the Golden Spike Tower. Proceed to the elevators and press floor 7 for the open air platform or floor 8 for the enclosed viewing area. The Golden Spike Tower and Visitor Center. More trains than you can keep track of. All right, that was a good informative video of an overview of the yard. And now we're going to go through the gift shop and up to the tower. All right, wait for the elevator. Open air deck seven, observation deck number eight. All right, let's go all the way to the top. Top of the tower. All right, and out we go. This map shows the number of children who rode the orphan train to different states between 1853 and 1910. p.m. and were taken directly from the train to the courthouse. Mr. Matthew set the children one by one before the crowd and gave a brief account of each. Applicants for the children were then admitted in order behind the railing. A lot of kids headed to New York. Select children, tired young people, weary. <laughs> one in Mexico, zero in Arizona. Peering into those strange faces. Hastings Harper. Sizing the Union Pacific's 4014 locomotive. Different size comparisons, a diesel, school bus, sedan, there's the 4014, and a 747. If you notice right there, 
notice the dime inserted into the rail. The so wheel contact area the, is the same size. Here's a display of what the North Platte diesel shop looks like in model form. From the lower viewing section, we're going to head upstairs and outside here in a minute, but if it's too hot or too cold, of course, this is where people come into. This place is massive. Started back in 1865, December 3rd, 1866, the first train entered what was known as Hell on Wheels. The famous William Buffalo Bill Cody operated his ranch using the rail to transport his show across the country. Keep on going down. November of 1948, the West Yard was open. August of 92, the westbound coal yard was expanded and computer aid dispatch was installed. 1994, the eastbound fuel facility was opened. July of 95, the new westbound fuel facility was opened. Guinness Book of World Records recognized Bailey's Yard as the world's largest rail yard. And on up till today. There's the maintenance and fuel farm. The amount of engines that are there. And that is looking eastbound. Not much action at the hump yard there. Start making our way west. The upper train's heading east, the lower one's heading west. Oh, yeah, there's action over there on the east hump yard, or I'm sorry, the west. There is definitely not a shortage of graffiti on all these trains. Everybody putting their masters of art on moving display. Every Union Pacific train stops here to get fuel, change crews, and sand if they need it. And sand is used for traction in some cases. Information on Wild West legend and showman of Buffalo Bill, born in Iowa in 1846. He gained his famous nickname by killing Buffalo 4,280 by his account. And in October of 1901, Cody's train pulled out of Charlotte, North Carolina around midnight, heading on a single track, unaware that there was another train coming. And there was a head-on collision, killing 92 of Cody's 110 trained horses. Then at the base, they give you some information, like here, Nebraska. 1,067 miles of track, Union Pacific headquarters in Omaha. Admission to statehood in 1867. Union Pacific started serving the state in 1865. 
and it just shows you where they are in the United States in case you didn't know where Nebraska was in the US and its state bird the Western Meadowlark the state flower is the goldenrod and then a little information on that Omaha Nebraska has been the Union Pacific headquarters since President Abraham Lincoln created the company with the signing of the Pacific Railway Act in 1862. And there's the states that the uh, rails go through. Not much out on the east side of the country except uh, Tennessee. Some wooden trains out here that the kids can climb on. This wall here is for people who are no longer with us who worked for Union Pacific. That lady right there is controlling these two engines by remote control. I tell you, technology is amazing now. See, she's got a green box here in her hand and remote control. These guys are not on remote control. Now she's on the front controlling the train. That is crazy. You have two different kinds of uh, locos there, HLCX and GATX Locomotive Group. I'm not really sure what those are. How cool was that seeing the largest rail yard in the world, Union Pacific. There were trains everywhere, engines everywhere, and thousands of people working all those trains. And how about that lady controlling those two engines with remote control? Technology is awesome. Well, if you ever get out here to Nebraska, right in the middle of the state, North Platte is the place you want to go to see all that action. And on that note, Traveler out.